Sadly, not every actor who joins the Marvel Cinematic Universe ends up sticking around. Some become unhappy with Marvel, some fall out of love with blockbusters altogether, and some become victims of scheduling conflicts. These are the reasons some of the MCU's key players have said farewell to that universe. A lot of fans were surprised when Marvel Studios announced in 2010 that it wouldn't ask Incredible Hulk star Edward Norton to reprise his role in Avengers. The company put out a press release saying, in part, "...our decision is definitely not one based on monetary factors, but instead rooted in the need for an actor who embodies the creativity and collaborative spirit of our other talented cast members." Norton's agents called the statement offensive and claimed the studio unexpectedly cut off negotiations. Norton changed his story over the years, telling NPR in 2014 that he chose to leave the role because he wanted more diversity in his career. What's the problem? Before 2010, there was already bad blood between Norton and Marvel. Norton signed on to the lead in The Incredible Hulk under the condition that he could rewrite Zack Penn's script. Marvel agreed, and while Norton's added scenes were filmed, most were cut before release. Two months before the movie's premiere, Entertainment Weekly reported Norton was refusing to do press for the film. And the break with Marvel still appears to be on Norton's mind. In July 2018, just over a decade after Incredible Hulk's release, he took a swipe at Marvel during Comedy Central's roast of Bruce Willis, using his turn at the podium to say, "...I tried to be like Willis. I did a big action movie called The Incredible Hulk. You know what went wrong? I wanted a better script." Tim Roth, who played The Incredible Hulk's main villain, Emil Blonsky, has revealed in the past that Marvel actually considered bringing him back for the sequel to The Avengers. He told Crave Online, "...they were going to do it. They were thinking, in Avengers 2 or something. It just kind of got swept under the carpet, I guess." It isn't clear from what Roth said whether they were considering Abomination as the main villain or if he would have been working with Ultron. Roth has since said he isn't confident about returning to the MCU, and considering the unlikelihood of a Hulk sequel, his doubts are understandable. Answering fan questions on Reddit in 2017, Roth wrote, "...I don't think Marvel will ever use me again, but it would be fun." Luckily, if Roth were to reprise the role, the fact that it's been so long since he last played Blonsky would actually help serve his character. Roth was in his late 40s when The Incredible Hulk hit the big screen, and the fact that his character was an expert soldier in an aging body was one of Blonsky's prime motivations for allowing himself to be transformed into a monster. According to Terrence Howard, the sole reason he didn't get to reprise his role as James Rhodes in Iron Man 2 and beyond is simple — money. Howard discussed his side of things in 2013 with Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live, alleging that Robert Downey Jr. was partially responsible. It turns out <laughs> that the person that I helped become Iron Man took the money that was supposed to go to me and pushed me out. Howard said Marvel signed him up for three films and then, when it was time to make Iron Man 2, they demanded he take an almost 90% pay cut. And I called my friend that I helped get the first job, and he didn't call me back for three months." Right. In a 2015 interview with Rolling Stone, Howard clarified that he was cast before Downey and that he took a $1 million pay cut to help convince Downey to jump on board, though Marvel took issue with Howard's story. During his second appearance on Watch What Happens Live in 2017, the actor said fences had been mended between him and Downey, but also that Marvel threatened him with legal action after his public attacks on Downey and Marvel. Am I going to come back and be War Machine? I think they could have um, a, a huge franchise off of it, but f them. <laughs> When Entertainment Weekly asked Chris Hemsworth and Kevin Feige about Jane Foster's absence in 2017's Thor Ragnarok, their answers focused largely on the film's narrative. Hemsworth explained that Thor and Foster had broken up and that his character was enjoying being a solo cowboy. Sorry to hear that Jane dumped you. She didn't dump me, you know. I dumped her. It was a mutual dumping. Feige added that with Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie, the filmmakers were matching Thor with a warrior who was, quote, "...much more his equal and in many ways his superior." But a much earlier story suggested there was a real-world reason for the breakup. According to a report from THR, bad blood started flowing between Portman and Marvel as early as 2011 over the firing of director Patty Jenkins from Thor The Dark World. The report, citing unnamed sources, said Portman was on the fence about participating in the Thor sequel because she wanted to spend more time with her son, who was only six months old at the time. The fact that Jenkins' involvement in Thor The Dark 
dark world would make her the first woman to direct such a big superhero film was what convinced Portman to sign on. THR sources said once Jenkins was fired, Portman was livid with Marvel, but contractually obligated to continue. Whether or not the story is true, publicly, Portman has said she's open to reprising her role as Jane Foster. Talking to Screen Rant in early 2018, she was asked about the possibility and said, I'm completely open to everything, but I have no news about that. While 2017's Thor Ragnarok was unquestionably a hit, one event in the film left fans furious. When Hela arrives on Asgard, she immediately murders two of the famous Warriors Three, Volstagg and Fandral. Who are you? What have you done with Thor? <laughs> Hogan the Grim at least gets a few lines of dialogue and a bit of a tussle with Hela before she kills him. Kevin Feige addressed the reason why Ray Stevenson, Zachary Levi, and Tadanobu Asano won't be seen again in the MCU in a November 2017 Junket press conference. Feige said the filmmakers wanted to make sure the audience saw Hela as a real threat. He explained, The Warriors 3 had noble ends, mainly to serve the arrival of Hela. The following month at the Heroes and Villains Fan Fest in San Jose, California, Levi admitted to fans that he was disappointed not only with leaving the MCU, but that Fandral's final words were left on the cutting room floor. According to Levi, the way the scene was originally shot, the swashbuckling ladies' man charged Hela crying for Asgard before dying. While the Red Skull does appear in Avengers Infinity War, that wasn't actually Hugo Weaving under all those prosthetics. It was The Walking Dead's Ross Marquand who replaced Weaving for the third Avengers film. While Weaving had signed a multi-picture deal with Marvel Studios, he decided he didn't want to return after Captain America the First Avenger, and told Collider he wasn't concerned about Marvel muscling him into fulfilling his contract. He said, I would be obliged to if they forced me to, but they wouldn't want to force someone to do it if they didn't want to. Unlike Terrence Howard and Natalie Portman, there aren't any reports of Weaving harboring any harsh feelings toward Marvel. Rather, he simply wanted to turn his attention away from blockbusters. Weaving told Collider, I think I've done my dash with that sort of film. It was good to do it and try it out, but to be honest, it's not the sort of film I seek out and am excited by. For a long time after Captain America The First Avenger, the only blockbuster films Weaving had been a part of was his return as Elrond in the first and third Hobbit movies, and even in those films, his screen time was relatively short. While you'd be hard-pressed to find many fans complaining about Josh Brolin's casting as Thanos, he wasn't actually the first actor to play the Mad Titan. Brolin first played Thanos in 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy, but it wasn't Brolin giving us that sinister profile in the mid credit scene of The Avengers. That was Damien Poitier, best known as Duprez in HBO's True Blood. Poitier told Geeks Worldwide that he didn't know he'd been cast as Thanos until he was sitting in the makeup chair. He said, I thought I was Clert. I thought I was going to be Super Scroll because the whole rumor was that the Scrolls were going to be in Avengers. No reports suggest that Marvel was in any way unhappy with Poitier performance. More likely, it wasn't a question of Poitiers being the wrong choice, but of Brolin being so right. Kevin Feige has told Collider, You look at Brolin's face and the performance he gives, he could be Thanos without any effects. He has that kind of face and that kind of gravitas to it. Though he never reprised his role as Thanos, The Avengers wasn't Poitiers' last appearance in the MCU. He also had a small speaking role in Captain America's Civil War as one of Crossbones' henchmen. Drop it. Or I'll drop this. Drop it! Sadly, Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver didn't survive 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron. You didn't see that coming? His death came as a surprise to many fans who were quick to speculate that the motivation to kill the character had something to do with Evan Peters being introduced as Quicksilver in the previous year's X-Men Days of Future Past, long before Disney acquired Fox. Speaking to MTV in May 2015, Kevin Feige said Fox's Quicksilver had nothing to do with the decision. He said, Quicksilver's death adds stakes to the ending of the film to show repercussions to Ultron's actions, and also in a way to solidify Scarlet Witch's character and Wanda's arc in the movie, and where we'll see her in the next films. Feige went on to say Quicksilver died in every draft of the script. In 2016, while promoting another movie, Taylor Johnson echoed Feige and said Age of Ultron writer-director Joss Whedon was lulling the audience into a false sense of security and playing with the widespread fan belief that it would be Hawkeye who didn't survive the film. 
But Taylor Johnson had a slightly different story to tell while talking to Cinema Blend in 2015. While he did say the plan was always for Quicksilver to die, he also admitted there was a costume designed for him if his character were to survive, and that it was, in his words, really cool. Oh well. Keep up, old man. Nobody would know. Nobody. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about the MCU are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!